السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه Again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our dear brother Yasser as usual uh, in his very practical ways uh, Alhamdulillah of uh, exemplifying the teachings of this deen Allah Azza wa Jal seems to give him tawfiq uh, inshallah all the time I would like simply in what I have to share with you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the essential dimension in our relationships, especially family relationships, uh, in a sense to put what he said, Hafizahullah, in a context. And that context begin by me telling you and myself first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Inna Allah kana ala kulli shay'in raqiba. The fact that he says that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is watchful over everything and that means I need to develop the consciousness of this state of watchfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over me inside of me whether you're a man or a woman knowledgeable or not uh, to develop this notion not only intellectually but experientially that Allah knows what's inside of me sister or brother or anyone learning it is important experiencing it exper experiencing it and struggling to do so is even more important Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for example وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهِ he who trusts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is enough for him or her in other words and I need and we need to internalize that reality of trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. When you have an attorney that you know is very able and you put him to represent you and your case, you call him my wakil. And that's the word for basically attorney. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes your wakil is when you are sure inside of you that you trust him and you in that trust subhanahu wa ta'ala you put him as the one who will for sure take care of you. When that notion is absent then the way we shall deal with the challenges that face us will be a way that is improper and sometimes wrong and sometimes even oppressive. Rasulullah is related to have said in the meaning of the text, Ma sha Allahu kan wa ma lam yasha lam yakun. Anyways, it's a, an axiomatic principle of our aqidah is to develop the notion that whatever takes place, and I have witnessed it to take place, I must know that it is within the creative will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he did not will it to be, it would not have happened. Nothing occurs in this universe externally to you or inside of you without his knowledge and without his creative will subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very important for me and for you to learn to internalize that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to me and you and many of us don't see this ayah and the import of it in terms of family relationships and happiness versus misery. When he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبًا Whosoever has iman in Allah, Allah will guide his heart. What does it mean? Well, if you're a mu'min, don't you have guidance in your qalb? Of course you do. But what is intended here more specifically, that if you have that iman, if Allah is in your heart, then there is that nur in your heart. And in the difficulties you face in life, in the challenges you face in life, 
in family challenges that you face in life, whether at home or in the greater family extension or in society, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for you a way to conceive of a very good solution to that problem. Yahdi qalbah, yahdi qalbahu ila al khuruji min al ma'aziq, min al shadaid, min al su'umat. But if Allah is not in our qulub, we don't have that light by which we are going to be able to solve our problems in a way that is beautiful, in a way that is constructive indeed. The nur of the mu'min of Allah in the qalb is very important. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be in our lives in this way says Allah Azza wa Jal, as you all know, my dear brothers and sisters, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ Indeed, by dhikr of Allah, hearts attain serenity and tranquility. And you know what? I hope some of you would have experienced that. This is an experiential, this is a spiritual reality that when your qalb is at peace, when your qalb is serene, you are going to deal with the problems you face, whether with your wife, or with your husband, or with your children, or at work, in ways that are more composed. Because your qalb is composed, it's not agitated, it's not restless. And if your qalb and inside of you, you were agitated and restless and angry, for example, the solutions you shall suggest for a challenge shall be most likely negative and hurtful and not proper. So I and you need to remind ourselves and practice the reality of dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. Dhikr with moments in which I try to bring Allah in my qalb to disengage from everything else quality time in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal alone by which I seek that Allah cleanses my qalb so that it reaches that level of quietude that would enable me to see things the way they are and to suggest solutions that are quite constructive and positive. Rasulullah Sallallahu is related to have said, إِنَّ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ سَقَالَةً وَإِنَّ سَقَالَةَ الْقُلُوبِ ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى For everything has a means by which to be cleansed, and the means of cleansing of the heart is, he said, ذِكْرُ of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Dua, to implore Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Why dua? Why to be prayerful? Because it is indicative psychologically, if you will, of the fact that I'm not arrogant, that I'm not only relying on myself and my efforts and to learn about means by which to do things actually and externally, which is fine. But sometimes what happens to us is we rely on those means, we rely on those efforts, we rely on those capacities that we think we have or people think we have instead of internally relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if, and that is indeed haqq and experience, I am a person who relies on his or her capacities and abilities and intelligence and experiences, you know what's going to happen? the other thing in the woman fine that is a fact but how to deal with it in addition to those practical steps mentioned earlier alhamdulillah but how to deal with that when Allah is in your qalb when I and you work and strive to remove the internal drives inside of us that are negative, that Allah does not love. And there is a way to do that until the point where some, alhamdulillah, do reach the point when their male ego is completely in control or mostly in control. When the sisters, whatever you call it, desire of we or weakness for that emotion becomes controlled and becomes balanced. When the nafs inside 
is polished. I should not be like one who says, well, this is I am, the way I am, you accept me the way I am. The woman saying that to the man, or the man saying it to the woman, or in different circumstances, accept me the way I am, that's not so correct. Because we are created as human beings and as Muslims especially to become, to develop, to evolve, to change. Islam is about change and especially change from within. I and you, the man and the woman, must learn to change inside, to change their emotions, to change their drives, to change their priorities, to change their preferences, to change their feelings, and so on. And that is what this deen is about, is to transform us indeed. And we should be like one who says, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِسُوءٍ Regardless, I should be like the one who said, and you know who said that, I do not absolve myself, in other words, from iniquities and deficiencies and weaknesses and drives that are improper, man or woman. It's not because that's the way I am, that's the way I shall continue to be accepted or not. And yes, he needs to strive to accept it and we need to strive to accept him, but that's not enough. They need, both need to actively and dynamically change within. وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِسُوءٍ Versus the one who says, I am what I am. أنا خير منها. I am the way I am. Shaytan said, I am the way I am. I am better than him. It's not about change. I don't want to change. We need to change because Allah Azza wa Jal created us in this way to develop, to evolve, to change. And in that is ibadah. I don't want to be the same human being internally, woman or man, that I was 25 years ago. Yes, in this growth of he compromising and she compromising, it should be simply a field of learning experiences for both of us to change internally. And then we would see each other very differently. The way you are inside is actually what determines the way you see others. But if you change the lens inside of you, the same problems might not be problems at all because you changed inside. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us and that's what we need to remember. <clears throat> when you are angry, and I need to change anger, it's not because I'm angry and a person who's tempered, she has to cope with me or he has to cope with her. And maybe some people are given that gift to be able to do that because they have peace inside. Alhamdulillah. But, you know, that needs to be changed gradually, of course, and by the help and only by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One way to look at that in addition to what Allah says in the Quran and Rasulullah said in the Sunnah, and to pray a lot to be able to practice and actualize what I know. Not everybody who knows actualizes or is able to actualize. Anger. The ulama of old have said, in a sort of Islamic psychological uh, assessment, that when a person of level A looks at a person of level B as less than what they are and when they do something they do not approve of their response is anger why haven't you done that the reason for that internally is that the person who is angry inside inside feels he or she is above the other. But if he or she feels less than the other and they do not do what he wants, they say the response is usually sadness, not anger. Subhanallah. And that is true if you think about it and you go through your life and you go into inside of you. 
So what does this deen teach me? I need, he needs, she needs, we need to look at the other so that I begin to rectify the temper inside of me to look at the other as not less than me. For that's buried inside of me. And the longer it continues, the more my response is one of anger. Until I get to a point, if I do, to recognize that she is or that he is like me. And my response would be not of anger, but something different. And of course, the person who, by Allah's grace, was permitted and enabled to look deep into himself or herself, and by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, disciplined his nafs, he or she does not see at all her or him disrespecting them. It doesn't exist. It exists only when I still have nafs. When my nafs is not controlled, is not tamed, is not disciplined, is not embellished by the presence of Allah Azza wa Jal in my qalb, then my response shall continue to be that way. When you have a nafs, an ego, a nafs, then yes, that's my response. But when that ego is, alhamdulillah, overwhelmed by the qalb of the person in awareness of divine beauty and majesty, jamalan wa jalalan, then that qalb, the person of that qalb, shall not respond in that way, my dear brothers and sisters. And finally, There is no greater way to be happy in this dunya and in akhirah than to take this dunya as a field of changing and a field of learning to change, to become better because Allah loves that. Allah wants that, Allah willed that, and Allah intended that for us subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me and you attain that internal serenity and tranquility by which ourselves our hearts would be able indeed to respond to all sorts of challenges at the family level or at the societal level in ways that are so noble and so constructive and so wise and so beautiful but it is a learning process. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. May Allah clear us. May Allah guide us. May Allah fill our qulub with his presence. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.